guys, what's up? It's me, Priscilla, and I'm here today because I wanted to talk to you guys about something. This is going to be an arts and tips and tricks video. So recently, if you watch my scrawler box videos, you see I just received this Derwent pencil kit. So I take for granted that most of you know the differences between these kind of leads and if you get these kind of kits. So today I thought I would go ahead and explain that with you guys. So I'm going to go ahead and explain to you each one of these. This is a 2H pencil. What does a 2H mean? It means it's a hard lead. So this is a really hard lead. So that means it's your typical number two pencil that you work with and it is typically your mechanical pencils that you work with at school. So this is the kind of lead that your mechanical pencils have. So this is a 2H. And this is my favorite sketching pencil, especially on watercolor paper and everything. If I, I don't exactly use my light board to trace hard rough sketches over onto the final piece. I just use a 2H pencil because I know it's extremely soft and it's easy to come right off the paper. If you'll see, if I can just put a little, little mark here. I love using my kneaded eraser when it comes to anything. As you can see it's pretty soft and it didn't leave that much of like anything behind. I love my 2H pencils just because if I'm doing a galaxy animal portrait with watercolor I don't line them I just use my 2H pencil and I go in and I lightly erase it so these are my favorite sketching pencils and then we'll jump up to HB. Now HB means it's a hard black so it's like a 2H so it's half the hard lead plus it's a darker color so if I go ahead and put this down then you can see it's already pretty a little bit more darker than that 2H and this is an HB and then moving up when I get into the 2B is a black lead so that means the lead is starting to get a little bit softer and there we go so this is a 2B and usually if I'm doing pencil portraits I usually stick to my 2B and my 6B just because that's as dark as I really honestly want to get. And then I move up to a 4B, and you can already see this is a getting, getting a little bit softer in lead. That means that when it's softer, it means it's going to get blacker. So this is a 4B. And then I get to a 6B. And you see, this is, in my opinion, 4B and 6B aren't all that different. They look almost exactly the same. So that's why when I'm usually doing my pencil portraits, I stick to my 2B and my 6B. And then when I get to the really, really dark lines, um, 9B is as dark as you can get, but 8B is super dark as well. So I have my 8B. So that is the whole grade, the whole grading scale that I have to show you in this particular package. And honestly, you don't need any other ones. In my opinion, all you need is like the six pack by Derwent and it's just perfect. <laughs> like I've seen packages with about 24 grading scale of anything and I still only use about three pencils. So this is a really, really old portrait that I did back in college and I'm really extremely proud of it. It's probably the only still life that I actually like. Now, in this class, as you can see, we were not allowed to smudge or blend. We weren't allowed to bend, blend. And probably because of this class, it taught me a good habit and good technique when it comes to my colored pencils because we were only allowed to go in circular motions to make things darker. But in this particular portrait, I remember I only bought three pencils every day to finish this whole still life. And that was my 2H, my 2B, and my 6B. And that's all I used on this entire portrait. You probably recognize this. This is called a blending stick or a shading stick. I call it a shading stick. But this is when I would, obviously, I would have gone in and I would have smoothed these out. But since this is for a grade and he did, he absolutely refused for any of us to use a tissue, our fingers, or even shading sticks. And we weren't allowed to touch them. We weren't allowed to touch them at all. We just had to blend in with our actual pencils. Just, And I mean, it was a pain. But at the same time, he taught us all an important lesson. And he especially, like develop my habit with coloring, especially when I jumped into colored pencils and started actually blending in, not using a shading stick or my fingertip, because you can do that with colored pencils, especially Prisma color pencils. So I know I told you guys I love to always sketch everything out with my 2H pencil, so I'm gonna sketch that out with the, my particular image, and we're gonna do drafts. 
So currently, right now at the New York Zoo, not the New York Zoo, but in Harpersville, April the giraffe is giving birth. So I thought it'd be cute to go ahead and draw a baby giraffe with her mommy. So I would go ahead and I would sketch out the entire image with my 2H pencil. Alright, now that I have everything sketched out, that's when I take my favorite 2B and I start going in and start shading a couple things. And there's a lot of shading going on in this entire picture, so that means I probably will use my 8B just because there's a lot of dark spots. So I'm going to go ahead and use my 2B. Also, you will see when I'm shading around, you'll still see that I'm going in that circular motion just because, like I said, like I showed you in the other, that portrait, it, it has been engraved into my mind just to shade that way, just to go in circles, whether it's with colored pencils or regular graphite pencils, just because that professor, for a whole semester, we would fail if we didn't do this technique. I'm not a huge person on agreeing with that technique. So um, so if you see, if you're wondering how do I shade so well, I don't go up and down. I don't go like this and I don't go like this. I go in literally little itty bitty circles. Okay, so now I'm going to start jumping around from my 6B, 2B, and 2H, and that way I, get, I start getting more into the darker spots. Just know I am jumping in between these three pencils. Last but not least, I like to go in with my 8B and just touch up on some really dark areas that I know are super dark, so that's like the last step. And 
And there you guys go. So I hope this was helpful because I know sometimes people get to these kind of pencils and they're just like, why are these weird letters and numbers combined together? I thought these were supposed to be pencils, not math. <laughs> My favorites are the 2H, the 2B, and the 6B because most of this entire picture was done with just those three pencils. I jumped in with a little bit of the 8B at the end just to get some darker areas. So I hope you guys have a most wonderful weekend and I will see you all next week with a tutorial. Bye!